First Amendment rights advocates are criticizing police in Kansas for raiding the offices of a local newspaper in the home of its publisher and owner, Eric Meyer. Officers seized computers, cell phones, and other reporting materials from the Marion County Record Office. Meyer also claims the raid put so much stress on his 98-year-old mother that it contributed to her death over the weekend. Sherman Smith joins us now. He is the editor-in-chief of another publication in the state, The Kansas Reflector. Thank you for joining us. We want to get to the backstory in just a minute, but first of all, the big question is, was this raid legal? Yeah, thank you for having me. You know, it's an unsettling situation, and the federal law, uh, the, the Privacy Protection Act, is designed to prevent exactly this kind of raid. Um, police say that there's an exception to that rule if they have reason to believe that a journalist is actively involved in a crime. Um, but the attorneys that I've talked to have said that the activity of the reporter in question uh, doesn't come anywhere near the level of, of a crime, certainly not the alleged identity theft that justified the uh, or supported the uh, the search warrant in this case. I mean, it's it, you'd think these guys were violating national security laws or something like, like that, uh, Sherman, but th yeah. that isn't what was going on here. Give us a sense of what exactly police were allegedly looking for. Yeah, there's a restaurant operator in town who is applying for a liquor license uh, somebody sent uh, information to the newsroom uh, about her driver's license history. And so reporter typed her driver's license number and date of birth into an online database to verify the records that she had received. But ultimately, they decided that it, it wasn't newsworthy enough to warrant a story. Um, what police were looking for was any records related to this restaurant owner, um, they they alleged that by typing this information in that she'd committed identity theft and uh, uh, improper use of a computer. And so they were trying to, to gather that information. Now, the attorneys, of course, would say that this doesn't justify seizing everything in the newsroom as they did or the, the personal home of the, the publisher. Uh, it's It would be a, an overreaction at best. Um, but also, there's uh, there's no reason to think that this actually was identity theft, no reason to think that it was even a violation of the state law that prevents you from disseminating information you get from this database. It was simply a, a reporter doing due diligence. So, so what happens next in all of this? We expect that the newspaper will file uh, some legal action as soon as today. Um, probably we'll start with uh, requesting an injunction so that they can get their materials back. Um, they're also weighing uh, the possibility of various lawsuits to seek damages from this. Um, there's also the, the outstanding issue of the affidavit that supported the search warrant. Uh, the, the court on Friday had told the Marion County record that there was not an affidavit. Uh, I was able to get clarity on this uh, this morning. They were not able to acknowledge an affidavit exists until the search warrant had been executed, uh, but they do have the affidavit and there's a process in Kansas where the local prosecutor has up to five days to challenge the release of that affidavit, and then the judge would make a ruling. Um, it's also possible the prosecutor could waive that and it could be released immediately. Uh, and of course, first attorney groups uh, have called for that immediate release of the affidavit so that we can see what what really uh, supported the, the search and seizure of an entire newsroom. So this is somebody who was applying to run a restaurant and get a liquor license? who clearly may have had some friends in the police department, basically, uh, and, and got them yeah. to basically break the law on their behalf? This, this is a small town of about 2,000 people. There, there appear to be a lot of conflicts of interest. It's difficult to really unpack all of the small town drama here. But this is a, a woman named Carrie Newell who runs a, a restaurant in town. She was applying for a liquor license. Uh, and there was some some issue here about whether a 2008 conviction for drunken driving should preclude her from getting a liquor license. Uh, so, you know, she is the alleged victim. Police say they were uh, acting on her behalf and trying to um, get to the bottom of this when they executed the search. Well, maybe somebody can send the police officers a copy of the First Amendment or two. Uh, Sherman, we'll keep track of this one because uh, it seems pretty outrageous, but we appreciate you sharing some details and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. Okay, thank you for having me.